struggling with drugs? Are you drinking too much? Do you have relations that you're not sure if they're pure or even belong to God? Are you feeling guilty every day by the way you're dealing with life? That was Claudette, but she didn't even know what was going on or how to deal with it. But what she did know was that she heard God talk to her and she could not ignore it. And with that, she started this process going high to church, dealing with stuff, and God brought her the answers. And this is what we want to give you today. The answers to the problems that you no longer have to carry on your back. Claudette Jackson is with us today. This is the second part. I highly recommend you watch that first show to see what is she already dealt with in her life. Claudette, welcome. Thank you. Wow, you were in prison and you were the happiest prisoner on earth. Yes. How did you do that? I blame God. <laughs> <laughs> I met him, like I said, uh, that day, August 3rd, and it just, my whole heart was just transformed. I knew love, I touched love, I tasted it, and I knew that it was mine. Wow, and you knew it that you knew it. Now, you always wanted to die so you yes. could go to heaven. Yes. Now you started to live, yes. but still wanted to be part of heaven. Yes. What, what changed? Because often what I see when people come out of prison, they have the best intentions to turn everything around. And then life happens, mm -hmm. and slowly but surely, they end up where they were before. Yeah. What was that like for you? Um, I, I, when I got out of jail, I didn't stop doing drugs. Oh, alcohol. no, 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 I no. Stop. I okay. kept doing them. Um, I was still in, in a homosexual relationship. Uh -huh. I was still doing what I was doing, but at this point, I began to utilize that time and spend it with the Lord. I would, you know, if meth keeps you up all night, then I would be up outside talking to him. What? With meth? With meth. <laughs> it's meth, God, and you, basically. Basically. <laughs> so, how does that work? Because God's going to touch you. Yeah, I just was never in that where it's a, a wrong. I didn't have that in me. I just yeah. knew I was taking advantage of it. And I smoked pot, and uh, it would open up realms, and I could see things, hear things. And it just got really crazy for like three months of just crazy. But I was spending time with the Lord, but I can also remember things that I was doing wrong uh, because I, I knew that the enemy was there as well. So I could hear both of them talking to so me. So tell me what that sounds like, because people are wondering, I want to hear God's voice, but is this God's voice or not? W what were you hearing? What were you seeing? Um, I would see uh, darkness, dark shadows, darkness in people. Uh, I could see light, light in people. And uh, smoking the marijuana, interesting enough, it allowed me to see things in the future. So things were happening at a rapid rate of speed when I would smoke weed. And like, like, like I'm trying to follow. Like I could see if I was in a conversation with you and I was high, I could begin to see things in your future wow. in, in a matter of seconds. And it would overwhelm me. And then I would have to get music to calm me down because it felt like my brain was going to literally explode. Now, was that literally what was going to happen in the future? Because instantly to mind, and, and forgive me, I don't want you to take this wrong, is that slave girl that was in the Bible yes. that they were using yes. to speak the future. And they were using and taking advantage of her. Right. Is that what you're talking about or totally um, different? Well, I would say maybe both because the enemy, we know he works in that way as well. Um, the cool thing is I would say to my friends, this is about to happen. This is, this person's about to do this. And they would be like, what? And then they do it. I'd say, see, I don't understand it either, but I can see it. Wow. Wow. And and, it, was, and it was overwhelming though. It really was overwhelming for me. So while you're on meth, you seeing this, do you think that was of God or actually of the devil those moments? I would have to say both because some things work very good. And uh, just the, it just felt like the, the spiritual realm was open. And I could see the, the past and the future, and it was happening too fast, and it would get overwhelming for me. Wow, because I'm seeing you at this train speeding towards the goal and kind of being the gray area. And most Christians will always say it's white or it's black, but there is no gray between, right? Yeah. But maybe that was the process of transformation for yeah. you. 
I, I would have to think that because uh, after a while, because of the friends that meth brings, they would always be at my door, no matter what time it was, early morning, whatever, searching for to get high with me. And after a while, it got too much for me and, I, and interference. And I said, Lord, I need you to take this away, the meth, so that I don't have to deal with the people. And he did. He said, okay. How, how did he? So you asked God for help. Then how did he take it away? It, I lost the cravings for it. And what? he moved me into another location, and I was rid of the friends. And then with the marijuana, I asked him to take it away because I didn't want to run through this process. I want to walk. I don't want to see all that I'm seeing that fast. Wow. And so he took it away. So, and I've, heard, I've been told you usually see demons before you see angels. No, I, not necessarily. Not with you. Not no, necessarily. not at all. Wow. So you're here, you have moved. Now you're still in relationships, uh, you you're have homosexual activity and all well, that the, stuff. Well, that part as well uh, began to break off of me. I, I was one of those things I said, I just want to be like a, a, a modern day nun. <laughs> I remember well, telling what does that, that look like? I don't want to like? be with anyone. I just want to be with you, Jesus, because I had fallen in love with him and we had relations. We talked all the time and he'd wow. show me things and... So that's all I wanted to do. I just wanted to be with him. And so that's what I did. I just, I was like, okay, I got to get done with this relationship and uh, done with the marijuana, done with the, the meth. And I just want to hang out with you. Wow. Wow. That's so cool. Do, do you hear that? A modern day nun, homosexual or, or gay, really, drugs, drinking, marijuana, the whole nine yards. I'm just going to be a modern day with Jesus, you know, a nun. I, I, you've got to hear the rest of this, and it's amazing. I love God's humor and how he really appreciates where you're at and will take you through the process to help you to turn into that person that you actually crave to want to be. Start hearing God's voice and learn next how you too can hear that voice. Stay tuned. We will be right back. Do you hear God speak? Hearing God's voice can change your perspective on everything. It changes the course of your life. Learn how to break the obstacles and words that hold you back. Looking to dive deeper in your relationship with God? To activate the person you were created to be? Empower a champion can jumpstart you to hear God speak. Join us for a free three-day challenge at empowerachampion.com. It's time to go out with the old and to go in with the new. And that's exactly what Claudette did. I would expect an instant transformation all the way, but she went through it gradually. And, and what I love about Claudette's story is that God himself just led her the whole way. And she heard him talking louder than anything else. And it changed everything. Yeah. Here you are, you hear his voice. A lot of people want to hear his voice, yes. and they do not know how. How can they hear? Ask him. That's Ask it? Him. That's it? Ask, Ask him? him? Because I, I stand on, he says, my sheep will know my voice when they hear it. So I remember asking a kid the other day, do you hear the demon, the Satan's voice? He said, yeah. I said, do you hear your own voice? Yeah. Do you hear the voice of the, the world? Yeah. Then how come you can't hear God's voice? What a beautiful way to put it. What did he say? He said, I don't know. I said, well, now you got to also remember, it says he has a still, small voice. So you are hearing it. You're just missing it. Now you need to ask him, let me hear it. And let me hear it louder? Let me hear it. Wow. Wow, that's great advice. And when you ask God, he will answer. He will answer. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. I've seen it over and over again. Yeah. So here you are. You're out of prison. You're going back to old ways, but God is talking yes. louder. Yes. Drugs are starting to go out of the way. You have moved. Did your old friends find you? Um, I still had connections with some of them. Yeah. Um, but they could see that my life was changing. My no meant no. No to drugs. None of that. But I also started going to church more. I was making sure I was in church seven days a week. If there was a church door seven. open. Seven. 
days. Seven days. Wow. So I was going to any church that I could find that was open. And uh, whether it was going for just prayer, whatever it was, I just knew I needed to be around it. And mm. so I just saturated myself in church, around church people, uh, reading and studying and just hanging out with him. It was, it was like being courted. Wow. And wow. Just, it was an awesome time of grooming for me and the Lord because we would just hang out all the time. Doesn't it say in the Bible that the, the Lord, that Jesus is basically our husband, yes. you know, and, and is that close to us? Yes. So seven days a week. So I heard Bill Johnson once say is God will give you what you need. But if you want the more, go after it. Yes, you I wanted agree. the more. Yes, I was hungry. And you went for it all. I was hungry. So what happened next? Well, I still was dealing with uh, the homosexuality right. stuff. And uh, the girl that I was with at the time, we had broken up because I was done. But she still kept coming around. And I remember um, asking the Lord to take, take that away. Lord, take it away. What's the problem? And so I was reading. I remember reading in the Bible. Uh, it says, uh, if you want the mountain to go into the sea, you, you just tell it to go in the sea. So I kept praying that. Okay, I want her to go in the sea. I tell her to go in the sea. <laughs> get away okay. and so it wasn't working she still kept coming back and so i was like lord what am i supposed to do i keep praying yeah for this mountain to go in the sea and he said well why don't you stop sleeping with her wow. oh and he just talked to you directly like that directly and as soon as i stopped she went away into the sea which the sea means the people yes so wow and then he began healing my heart wow how did you get there in the first place? You know, I know we covered in the first show, but I'm sure there was rejection. There was all kinds of stuff. That is I usually the big thing. as a young kid. There it is. And it opened that door. Yeah. And uh, it just became a part of who I was. Yeah, you keep moment. hearing that over and over and over again. You know, There's the always story. a door that opens. Yeah. There's always a door. And yeah. it doesn't, I don't think it necessarily has to be molestation, yeah. but there's somehow that door gets opened. Something as a, happens. As a young person, yeah. and, it, and it, it was wide open for me. For me, it happened at the time uh, in a very different way. My dad, when I was 11 year old, took me to uh, England and Scotland mm -hmm. and we were in a hotel and nothing happened. But all of a sudden in this hotel room, I remember it pouring rain and him making steak on top of a toilet seat. I never <laughs> forget that moment, you know. But what happened there was there was a thought that came in and all of a sudden I became afraid of my dad. Mm -hmm. There was no reason. I made a big mess of that, shared it with the teachers at school that I didn't want to be afraid. Right. I had no reason and I could not break it off of me. My dad, something happened when he found out. I really embarrassed yeah. the family. Afterwards, I asked the Lord just within the last two years, what happened? I had a great dad. Mm -hmm. Why did this wall get built between us? And I remembered and someone telling me when I was struggling with this, or no, the Lord showed me actually on a walk, there was a demon in that room mm -hmm. and something happened and your spirit picked it up. Yes. It was that easy. Once I knew that, gone. Yeah. But it's amazing how doors can open like yeah. what you shared. That's now you were shutting all those doors and yes. the door of the heavenly realm of God's realm opened up yes. right for you. I think it's it's more or less like going into it, okay, I'm not necessarily seeing these things as issues going into my relationship with the Lord, but as I'm going deeper and deeper, he's he's showing me ways to get out of it so that I can enrich my relationship with him. I mean, I was still dealing with masturbation, that that and pornography. I was still dealing with those things, not necessarily thinking they're wrong, but as I was doing them, he began to show me the demonic side of it, which allowed wow. me to say, I don't want this anymore. What does the demonic side look like? Oh, it's crazy. The pornography is just not watching a screen. There's all kind of demonic activity happening in the background. Oh my goodness. And after I saw it, there was no way I wanted to watch it anymore. Wow. I, I, you know, we often don't even think about it. It's, it's more lust or the moment or just one more time or whatever is going on. But when you start seeing what is really going on in the back scenes and are you willing to change that right now, if you want us to pray with you or connect with you, we would love to do that. 855-515-5550 or go to barbtv.com. 
www.ghostbusiness.org. We want to help you. I know when Claudette was able to start seeing reality, I know God will see that reality and share that with you as well. So right now I say a prayer over you. God, show them truth. And I pray for that truth to set you free. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. TV is all about you getting the needs met that you have. Satan wants to steal, kill, and destroy your life, but Jesus wants to give you the abundant life. How do we do that? We have guests with stories, and God wants to do the stories again in your life. He wants to change your life, He wants to improve your life, and He wants you to have all the benefits. So how can people see those demons? How can they see what you're seeing? Ask the Lord to show them. Ask them. And, 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 it, and it goes with relationship. I mean, if, if God can trust you with those things, he will show you. But wow. you have to build a relationship. You know, it's, it's like being in a friendship or a marriage or something. You, you get to know each other. And spending time with the Lord, he began to open those doors because he knew, hey, she really wants to be with me. She desires to hang out with me. Wow. And, and so as I got to know him more and more and more and more, giving up more time and, and my things with other people, he began to show me things and I could hear his voice louder. So it, it's really just building that relationship with him is probably the most important thing we can do to get wow. to know what he wants to show us. Uh, you know, and, and um, when I asked the Lord for a scripture for you, I think that goes with that right there out of Galatians 4. And it says in verse 3, starting, So it is with us, when we were juveniles and we were enslaved under the hostile spirits of the world. I think that's what you're talking about right here. Mm -hmm. But when the time of fulfillment had come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law. Yet all of this was so that he would redeem and set free those held hostage to the law so that we would receive our freedom and a full legal adoption as his children. And so that we would know that we are his true children. You learned that. Yes. God released the spirit of sonship and basically daughtership into our hearts, moving us to cry out intimately, my father, my true father. I, I love how you're talking because it's like, oh my goodness, it's like speaking scripture here. Yes. Now we're no longer living like slaves under the law, but we enjoy being God's very own sons and daughters. And because we're his, we can access everything our father has. Yes. For we are heirs because of what God has done. When you hear that and where you're at today, what does that mean to you? It means, it means that I believe what the word of God says. He, he wants people that are going to believe him at his word. And, and we know faith comes by hearing and hearing by reading his word and relation with him, hanging out with him. That time with him is so important. Mm. And, and that's in that time period of, of grooming us. He says, blessed are those who have not seen, yet they believe. Yeah. I can't see him, but I can hear him, and I believe it. And yeah. I've grown in that belief, and I'm his child. Uh -huh. I'm a child of the God of the universe, and he wants to spend time with me. He wants to spend time with you. He wants to hang out with us. He's restored that. That's part of the, the him going to the cross is to restore that relationship that he's had created with Adam and Eve. He had a relationship with them. They could talk to him. Yeah, intimately. Intimately. Like intimately personal. And, and that was the reason why he died for us is so he could restore that mm. back to us. And that's a heart belief. We have to believe in our heart that that's truly what he's doing. And we grab a hold of it by faith. And he won't let you down wow. when you run after him. That's so beautiful, especially if you see how God brought you there. And I read what I just read out of Galatians. 
And I saw everything you had talked about right there in front of my eyes. I was in bondage. I was in bondage to sexual immorality, bondage to drugs, alcohol, bondage to cutting, bondage to mental illness, bondage to homosexuality. I was in bondage. Wow. And wow. he came and set me free, not because of anything I did. It's because of what he did. Yeah. I, I am not worthy on my own, but with Jesus, I am worthy. That's all God, his father, sees is my worth because he's looking at his son and what he did. That is right on. And, and again, I want to tell you, if you want us to pray with you, if you want us to share your story, talk to us, 855-515-5550 or go to barbtv.org because God has bigger plans for you and he doesn't want to leave you where you're at right now. And that's what you experience. So talking about plans, what are you doing today and how far have you come? Well, today I am a missionary. Uh, I travel the world and I preach the gospel. I preach what he's done for me and share him with others. Also, I am definitely waiting for my husband that he will bring. I, I, I trust that he Not will, a wife, not a, a husband. Wife. I, I'm wow. ready for a husband. Because he's, he's that's a switch heart. probably, yes. isn't that? Yes, he's groomed my heart. He's taken those desires away for women and replaced it with men. Wow. He's restored. He's restored yeah. what was stolen from me. And that was the innocence of having that choice. I didn't have the wow. choice as a child. But he restored that innocence. So if I get married, I get married. And he's going to bring it. And I'm okay with it. You know, I have the tingling of Holy Spirit. I felt it on my toe. I felt it in my wrist and in my shoulder. I was like, <laughs> wow, you know, because I love your real, your authentic, and you bring hope to so many people that have no clue how to get there. Yeah. So your first step was ask. Ask. And your second step was ask again. Ask again. So, and just keep asking just keep and asking. start listening. He, he calls me a questionologist because I'm asking questions all the time. Why, Lord? Why this? Why that? How come? What can we do? What can I do? It's just relationship. He's my dad. Yeah. Wow. wow. He's my dad. He's my best friend. He's my brother. I mean, he's all those things to me. And I only know it through growing in relationship with him. There is no other way. Now, when you work through all that, I think it's amazing what you're doing. And I'm excited where the Lord has led you. We're all like, yay, I want more of that, right? But how worked that with forgiveness for you? Did you have to forgive people in your life to actually start stepping more into that freedom? Did, yes. did the Lord show mm -hmm. you, you know, especially the man that molested you and started this whole thing, and he was enslaved to his own demons, right. basically. So I'm not saying it was right, because it was not. But so... How did you work through all that? Well, I'll give you an example of when I was able to forgive my mom from my childhood curse. Mm. Uh, he actually showed me how she was raised and the things she went through. Wow. Which allowed me to know she did the best she knew how with what she had. Yeah. And it helped me to forgive her because we're not called to be victims for the rest of our lives and blaming other people for why we're in the rut we get in. Yeah. He brought an uh, answer and that's forgiveness. You forgive and you get the freedom. Right. That's but sometimes thing. it's the sting that yes. is left. There are situations I have forgiven a hundred times, it feels mm -hmm. like. Yeah. And then finally I cried out to God. I said, I want the sting to be gone. I don't want it to come back again and allow all that pain to happen yeah. again. And to me, what worked for me was taking communion and claiming the blood of Christ and crushing flowers to make perfume and literally surrendering it to him and yeah. literally that sting a hundred percent gone mm -hmm. and has not come back now it's trying once in a right. while with those little thoughts that come in so how do you take those thoughts captive when they happen i, I think one thing that that as you speak what what we think i think was missing is like we don't think forgiveness is a supernatural thing that comes from him i would never thought about that but it does we can't do it on right. our own. We try, as you said. I've said it a hundred times, and it's not going away. Yeah. But then he gave you his formula. Yeah, he did. And it went away. hundred percent instantly, not just that, that one rejection moment, mm -hmm. all rejection yeah. moments just left right out of there, right? And that's what we want for you. 
We want you to have the more that God has for you. So Claudette, real quickly, if there is like one word you could sum everything up of where you're at today, what would it be? I would use one of my favorite scriptures. And um, it, in that scripture, he says, Jesus has come into the world as a light so that those who believe do not have to stay in darkness. I believe that with all of my heart, that no matter what darkness you find yourself in, God's made a promise that you do not have to stay there. And he wants to heal you. That's the good news. He wants to do it. He doesn't have to. He wants to. And he sent his son to show you that and prove it. Claudette, thank you so much for sharing that word. Thank you for being on the show. You're one of my favorite people on the show because you're so real. So thank you so much. And with that, I just want to share with you right now, God wants to help you. So if you want to get to know that Jesus right now, Ask him in your heart right now, dear Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me for what I've done wrong and help me to ask and learn more. Contact us. God loves you and so do I. Have a wonderful day. Do you hear God speak? Hearing God's voice can change your perspective on everything. It changes the course of your life. Learn how to break the obstacles and words that hold you back. Empower a Champion can jumpstart you to hear God speak to activate the person you were created to be. Join us for a free three-day challenge at EmpowerTheChampion.com. Feel like you're being turned into a robot, that you're taught how to think, how to feel, how to do anything in life, how to learn even in the schools that's taking place. Our so, minds are, are transformed because of that, so we can relate to numbers, likes, and um, images in art as a person. We, what, what I'm hearing you say is that our value is no longer our identity in Christ often, mm -hmm. it's more the value in what the world says who we are. How do you actually move forward, especially with so much trauma, so many things happening in your life? And um, you know, that trauma actually happened to Camila herself as well.